So from a foundationalist perspective, there are, there are certain beliefs that, uh, that you know without inference. Does the belief that God exists, does that, um, could that classify as, as one of those? Um, or, or is that too broad of a, a foundation? I don't know what it would be like for that to be something known without inference. Mm. Uh, I am reluctant to say God himself could not give me such awareness of his existence that I would not require any grounds for it. But I'm not sure what that would look like. I'm just I'm a little baffled. Would it just be a very strong predilection to believe this thing i don't think we should just back up onto the pure phenomenology of the strength of the sense of rightness yes yes this is right this is the thing uh, i think we need something else and so in developing foundationalism i have tried to make an argument that there are certain kinds of beliefs that cannot be wrong because of the way that they are formed mm. um, I, I am experiencing like this the demonstrative picks out an aspect of my experience. I can't form that belief if there's no aspect of my experience being picked out. Yeah. And if I form it that way, I am right. I then need to argue that this is not the same thing as I am experiencing however I am experiencing, which is just tautological, right? Yeah. So that's fine. I, I need to give an account there, and I think I do. But you can't make belief that God exists much less belief that Christianity is true, the great truths of the gospel fit into that mold. So if you're going to try to argue, no, these are good places to stop, then you're going to have to give us some other kind of account as to why those are good places to stop. Yeah. I understand that there are people who have a hard time seeing what it would be like for Christianity to be, to be false. I talked to a guy, a friend of mine, uh, we were hanging in a coffee shop once and I asked him, well, why do you think Christianity is true? He knew I was a Christian. He, I, I wasn't trying to pull his chain, but I just asked him that question. And he looked at me, he was kind of baffled. He said, well, how could it not be? Mm. Not a satisfying answer. I think that if that's all you have to say, then I'm worried about what's going to happen when you get into conversation with somebody who knows full well how Christianity could fail to be true, might not be uh, a creator of the universe, might be a creator, but he's not interested in what human beings are doing, didn't send his son to die on the cross. It's, you know, there's a lot of ways Christianity could turn out to be false that we can at least describe. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you need something more than that, not something more than that to be a Christian. When yeah. Jesus says, you know, whosoever comes to me, I, you know, I'm not going to cast him out. He doesn't add an asterisk saying, provided your epistemology is really, really good. Right. God condescends. He accepts us with all of our failings, which are manifold, including epistemological failings. Yeah. So I'm not putting that up as a condition for salvation, mm -hmm. but I do think that it's a poor position to be in, to have no reasons or even to define yourself into an epistemology that absolves you of giving reasons yeah. for your belief. Yeah. Um, and I say it that way carefully because I know there are people like William Lane Craig who say that this is borne home to them by the internal instigation of the Holy Spirit, but they also have arguments. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad that he appeals to arguments because I don't think that the IIHS is going to do the kind of work he thinks it will do. Mm. So we better have the arguments. Yeah. So this is a place where... I want to acknowledge people can buy into an externalist epistemology and still have internalist style reasons that they're willing to give. Yeah. But when the chips are down, they want to say, yeah, but it, you know, the final work, the uh, intrinsic defeater defeater uh, for all these things is my direct apprehension of this through the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, that I think is not going to work. And I think that that's not a good thing to teach people as being normative. If you go back in church history and you look at the works of the great Puritan divine Richard Baxter, yep. he has a lot to say about people who make that kind of direct apprehension normal, ordinary to the cognitive life of all believers.
Yeah. He calls that, and it's not. A, he's, this is not an endorsement. He says this seems to me a direct expectation of enthusiasm. Huh. You are you are saying, all right, everybody who's really a Christian has to just gin it up like this. Yeah. Oh man, it's such a slam um, coming from back then saying it's it, it's enthusiasm. It's like, oh dude, like that's a uh, that's bad. Right. So this is from his book, The Saints Everlasting Rest. If you want to put a reference in the show notes, I can send it to you afterwards. Yeah. 